Welcome to an animation on the graphs of polar equations. What we'll do in this video is take a look at several graphs of polar equations and then we'll trace them as theta increases from zero to two pi radians. So the first graph we're going to take a look at is r equals cosine theta, which we know from the previous video would be a circle. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can create this graph. So as theta increases from zero to two pi along this bar, which I know you probably can't see, the graph will be traced here below. So as theta increases from zero to pi over two, what we're seeing here is r, the distance from the pole, and also theta, the angle formed between the ray pointing to that point and the polar axis. So as theta increases from zero to pi over two, we could see the value of r started at one and then decreased to zero. When theta is between pi over two and pi, we might be thinking that we're going to plot points in the second quadrant, but remember that cosine theta is negative from pi over two to pi, therefore the r value is negative and we're plotting points in the opposite direction or in the fourth quadrant. And as we reach pi radians, r would be negative one, so we plot this point over here, and now we have a complete circle, and then from pi to two pi, the graph repeats itself. Okay, the next graph we're gonna take a look at is r equals sine two theta. Remember, this is a rose, and if n is even, we have two n petals. Two times a n value of two would give us four petals, since n is even. Let's take a look. Since sine two theta would be zero at zero radians, we'll start at the pole, and as theta increases from zero to pi over two radians, we can see r increases to one, at pi over four, and then returns back to zero at pi over two. Next, from pi over two to pi radians, sine two theta would be negative, therefore we're actually plotting points in the opposite direction when theta is between pi over two and pi, forming the second petal. And then the third quadrant, from pi to three pi over two, r is positive, it increases from zero to one, back to zero, and then from three pi over two to two pi radians, the r value will be negative, and therefore we're plotting points again in the opposite direction, forming that fourth petal. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Now we have r equals cosine three theta, another rows, but now since n is odd, n is three, we have exactly n petals or three petals. Let's take a look. As theta increases from zero to pi over two, we can see the r value starts at one, decreases to zero. Then from pi over four to pi over two, cosine three theta would be negative, so we're plotting points down here in the third quadrant in the opposite direction. From pi over two to pi, the r value will be positive, so we're plotting points in the second quadrant. And then lastly, we finish off with a little piece in the fourth quadrant. After pi radians, the graph repeats itself. Here we have a rose again with three petals. And the last one I wanna look at more thoroughly would be the limisson where we have r equals one minus sine theta since a divided by b would equal one, we have the special case of a cardioid. Let's take a look. As theta increases from zero to pi over two radians, we can see r went from a value of one and decreased back to zero. Then from pi over two to pi radians, the r value increases back to positive one from pi to three pi over two. Notice the r value is still positive. We're plotting in that quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, we have completed the graph. So this graph does take two pi radians to complete. Okay, on the next screen, I just have some that are more for fun than anything else. One of the neat things about graphing polar equations is you get some very 
very interesting and pretty cool looking graphs. So let's take a look at a few just for fun. So here we have r equals 1 plus 2 sine 4 theta. This next one will be 1 plus 4 cosine 5 theta. Now we have r equals sine theta divided by 4. And I'm always amazed. This is a pretty cool looking design to me. Next we have r equals sine 8 theta over 5. And as this is created, you can see it's a rose that has overlapping petals, which creates another really cool design. And there's one last one. Here we have r equals sine theta plus sine cubed of 5 theta over 2. And there we go. When I start to see some of these more interesting graphs, it always reminds me of some of the company logos that you see online or on TV. I hope you found this video helpful as well as interesting. Thank you for watching.